Chapter 1. Make Your Plan Any project you work on will flow better with a good plan. The goal here is to avoid biting off more than you can chew, getting stressed and giving up. This chapter will give you tips so that you will not end up with giant piles of stuff that overwhelm you, and it will help you with the smoothest organization process possible. A. Figure out where it will all go. This is a roadblock that often ruins your hard work when you are cleaning. You have organized your entire house or a single room, and now you have a bag of stuff you don't know what to do with. You went from having a closet or bedroom overflowing with clothing to have a closet or bedroom with two giant garbage bags sitting in them. Knowing where you will take your goods is essential before you start doing any organization. If there is a local charity or thrift store that accepts donations, pick which one you would like to donate to. The giant drop-off boxes that are usually found near big box stores are a great option for dropping off goods to. I like them because they are available 24 hours a day, so you can go there at whatever time is convenient for you. If you expect to have more recycling waste than what you can fit in your recycling bin, see if there is a large recycling box nearby where you can get rid of some excess. Of course, you will want to make sure it's a community box and not a private one. Lastly, and I imagine garbage will be the biggest concern for most people, I live in an urban area where you can only throw out one large garbage bag a week. If you are like me, you might need to find your local waste management intake hub. They will usually help you throw your garbage out, and sometimes they charge a fee, by the carpool, for example. Take five minutes to look up what the local rules are in your area. It may seem like a drag, but it is so much better to do a quick search now than having to live with bags of garbage in your house for weeks or months. B. Know your boundaries. This is a lesson I learned the hard way when it comes to organizing and getting rid of stuff. Sometimes things that you think are worthless or have been forgotten about are still near and dear to a family member or housemate's heart. The key here is communication. In my case, I gave away some of my brother's childhood books that had been tucked away and untouched in a basement for years while I was organizing. I thought that he had completely lost interest in the books. While he may not have been interested in reading or even looking at them anymore, they still held sentimental value to him. Luckily, at the end of the day, it is just stuff. And even if you make a mistake like me, you probably will be forgiven. Learn from me, though, and know your boundaries while keeping open communication throughout the organization process. I should also say I have been on the receiving end of something being moved or thrown away without anyone asking my permission, and I can confirm it is distressing. Play it safe. Also, talking to your family members or housemates about your project is a great way to get others involved in your project. Organizing is often something many people want to do, but simply need a prompt to help them get started. If you are part of the rare breed that simply enjoys organizing, you might be the person who can motivate the rest of your house to get organized as well. Working as a team, I'm sure you know, gets more done faster, so communication can work in your favor here. C. Pick a percentage to work with. This seems like a strange business-like step, but it is not a strict command. It does help, though, to have a clear goal in mind. You might not think in percentages all the time, but maybe you want to throw out half your t-shirts or a third of the spices in your spice cabinet. Whether you think in fractions or percentages, this step is more about making a defined goal than anything else. Some people like to count how many items they throw away and how many they keep. It can help them feel accomplished to say, I planned on throwing out a quarter, 25%, of my shoes. I started with 24 pairs. I threw out seven. I beat my goal because I threw out 29%. You might not be that person, but having a percentage or an amount that you can throw out can help you speed up difficult decisions. 
as you are going, you might run into an item that you cannot easily decide on. If you started with a goal and you feel you are doing a great job, you might decide to keep that tough decision item. If you feel you are not doing as well as you would have liked, you might toss it. There are two last notes I should add. First, you are your own boss in this task. Do not be upset with yourself if you did not achieve your goal. Details change things. Second, there is no percentage that is the right percentage. It is a completely personal decision. D. Imagine your organized space. Imagining your clean space is a great motivator. We can be discouraged by what exists in front of us when we enter a room and feel like cleaning it is impossible. If you can remember your house when you first bought it, or if you just have the goal to be able to see a corner of a room again, that can be a strong enough goal to guide you through the process. If you are worried you're going to give up halfway, tell someone else about your goal. That way, you will hold yourself accountable. Organizing and reducing clutter is partly something that improves your life, but it can also be thought of as a fun redecorating project. This step is all about getting in the right mindset to make it feel less like a chore. Lastly, make sure the goal is your own goal. If you are cleaning only because you are going to have some guests stay over in a month, you might not be as motivated to clean and it will feel like a chore. Try to find a motivation on your own, even if there is a secondary reason you are cleaning. That way, it will feel like you are achieving your own goal, not just doing something to please someone. Chapter Summary Number 1. Know where you will put your junk before you start cleaning. Number 2. Talk to your family or housemates before you touch their stuff. Number 3. Make a rough goal of how much you want to throw away to help guide you through the process. Number 4. Have an idea of what you want your organized space to look like to help you stay motivated. 